Indianapolis Colts and the Jacksonville Jaguars. It is four in favor of the Jags. It is 44, 45 and a half is the total. Steven, the big story in this one is everyone's talking about, okay, this is the Jags coming home after being in London for two weeks. There's no way they can do this. There's no way they can get this done. It's they're going to be tired. Their bodies aren't going to be adjusted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's kind of the story on the Jag side of things. The story, of course, on the Colt side of things, no Anthony Richardson is going to be Gardner Minshew. At least we know from the get-go that it's going to be Gardner Minshew in this game. I, I don't want to buy into the whole Jags being in London for two weeks makes them a worse team thing here, really. But that being said, I don't have anything to count on the Jack. So I, I will go ahead and follow that up with yet. I don't have a ticket in my account of them. They are the better team. They are the superior team. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Gardner Minshew, I think is neutral. I know some people are trying to say it's a positive. It's neutral because yeah, he throws it better, but he doesn't have the, he does, he's not doing anything with his legs. He's not picking up. He's not making plays with his legs. He's not doing, adding an element that the defense has to take you know, account for. So it's probably just a neutral thing with Gardner Minshew. Only play I did put in the account on this one, I put in an over on Josh Downs. If you guys look, like Gardner Minshew just looks at Downs basically the exact same way that he looks at Pittman. Like there, there, there is no like actual like wide receiver one when Minshew's in there, same target share, kind of same average depth of target, same routes being run, all, all the different stuff like that. And so yet he's priced way down from where Pittman is at. It's only at 44 and a half. I'll take the 44 and a half over on that. I think when we look at the Jags, we know the one thing about the Jags, they are actually a pass. You cannot run against this team at all. And so you have to throw it. The Colts are going to have to throw it much more. And um, the over 44 and a half is my angle here in this one. Uh, what say you Colts Jags to the Gardner Minshew, Minshew point. I agree with you. I don't agree with the people that are saying it's a big downgrade uh, and the people that are saying it's a completely different offense with Minshew's in and makes it more challenging. That's fine. But it's just also the second year in a row that Minshew has been in a Shane Steichen offense. So I think that there isn't as big of a learning curve here. I think it's a little smoother transition than what it would typically be going from a, a quarterback of Anthony Richardson style to Gardner Minshew also small sample here because he hasn't played much but in the in the snaps that Minshew has had positive completion percentage over expected versus Richardson whose CPOE was only better than Aiden O'Connell and uh, DTR on the Browns so not great passing wise for Richardson there anything that they got was mostly scheme from Steichen and the Jags play zone defense as a, at a top 10 rate in the NFL Minshew, a passer rating around 100 against zone this year, 80% completion percentage against zone this year. Very solid numbers. Flip the other side, I'm a little concerned about the Jags being able to protect against the Colts front here. The Colts are number nine in pass rush win rate, number four in run stop win rate. Jags are bottom three in pass block and run block win rate. So is Trevor Lawrence going to have enough time here? And the Colts are generating pressure with a bottom five blitz rate in the NFL. So they're able to keep extra men in coverage against Lawrence, which has led to the number one zone coverage team in the NFL with the Colts defense. And Lawrence is below average this season and also last season in completion percentage and passer rating against zone defense. So all that being said, I think there's enough here to take more than a field goal on the Colts. So I did. I took Indianapolis plus four and a half. If you're hearing this later and only plus four is available, I would still bet that too. Adam, we do have uh, Trevor Lawrence that is, I, I don't think a lot of people would, would think this, is the number two graded overall passer according to Pro Football Focus, only behind Tua Tagovailoa. Um, and if you look, there is a lot of stuff that probably could lean towards him being even, even better. Certainly from a counting stats perspective, been a victim of a bunch of terrible drops. Certainly, there's been some untimely turnovers for this offense as well. Uh, stuff that he can't really control along the way, too, whenever you consider that, you know, some of these fumbles that the running backs are having. I, I think the Jags are kind of on the up right now. I'm going back to what I said at the beginning. I still don't have the four in the account. I think the Jags are kind of all, I think the Jags are kind of the team to watch here over the next few weeks and see if they really do kind of take that next step. But given that I don't know what a team looks like coming from two weeks overseas, I'm going to go ahead and say, all right, Matt, 
if they win by 10 and you feel stupid that you didn't put the four in there, then so be it. But I'm going to play that I, I'm smart enough to know what I don't know, and I don't know what teams don't look, look like after spending two weeks overseas, and so it, it's a pass for me. Yeah, you and I are 100% in sync on this game because everything I have on this game says play Jags, right, at, at minus four. My, my rating is Jags minus five and a half. Uh, not only do you have the fact that the Jags have been a top five run defense in the league so far this year, they're adding back in a starting tackle in Devon Hamilton into that line to go along with Foto Fadakasi, and you're going to now make that a team that is a straight no on trying to run against them. And so now, if we're putting Gardner Minshew into the situation of, we know you have to pass and you don't really have any receivers, then I'm in the situation where I say, there are two ways into this game for me. You could talk me into the spread. I'm not going to do it. I'm off it. But I, if you sat here and banged me over the head for the next half hour with good Jag stats and said, okay, this is the game where everything you thought could be good about the Jags comes out, then sure, I'd be on it. And I think a lot of people will be convinced that was last week against the Bills. I don't think it was last week against the Bills. They held the ball for 40 minutes. That's fantastic. Trevor Lawrence was unbelievable on third down. That's fantastic. Uh, but the Buffalo Bills defense lost multiple starters within that game. I'm not willing to bank too yeah. much on that. The other way in that I would look at this, uh, I know you're talking about an over, Matt. I have a hard time seeing that if the Colts can't run the ball at all. And so for me, I would actually be looking Indianapolis in particular at an under on them without the ability to run the ball. You can find it 20 and a half minus 20 or you can play at 19 and a half even money considering I'm not the kind of player who's putting in a stake where it's going to make a significant difference to play minus 20. I'd like to get that extra number and play yeah. 20 and a half. So I'll play under 20 and a half on the Colts. The uh, rushing props are not up yet, but I guarantee you Zach Moss is going to be on an inflated number coming off last week and he's not going to get to anything. I, if you told me he didn't get to 50 yards this week between the fact that the Jags are a better run defense and that Jonathan Taylor is going to cut into his carries, I'd believe you. Yeah, the last thing I will say this, this might be a pretty opportune like live betting scenario. If you kind of see from the get-go that the Jags just look like the Jags, then I wouldn't be afraid to come in on the Jags, right? I mean, like I think if this is a if this is a flat if this is a flat scenario where, hey, you just the bodies just aren't readjusted and they just look like trash, then I think we'll be able to see it fairly early in in this one. So, um, it might be a might be a live bet for me to come in on the Jags if I see the first two series and it's like, oh, they just look like the Jags, like they they look normal. Then I think that might be a an angle for me in this one as well. 